Believe it or not, procrastination has nothing to do with your work. Procrastination is a form of stress relief. So the only way that you can break this habit, and that's an important word for you to hear, you're not a procrastinator. You have a habit of procrastinating. Big difference. Because if it's a habit, I can teach you to use science to break it. You see, all habits have three parts. There's a trigger, and in the case of procrastination, the triggers always stress. Then there's a pattern you repeat, and in the case of procrastination, it is to avoid doing something. And then there's a reward. You get a little stress relief. The only way to break a habit, you guys, is not to deal with the triggers. You're never going to get rid of the stress in your life. But you can 100% change your pattern of avoiding work. So next time that you're in a situation where you feel yourself hesitate, you spent way too much time checking out the highlights from last night's scores, what you're going to do is you're going to go, oh, I must be stressed out about something. Acknowledge the stress. Then go five, four, three, two, one. I want you to count to yourself because I want you to interrupt the habit that's stored here, and I want you to awaken your prefrontal cortex. Then I want you to just work, just for five minutes. The reason why I want you to only work for five minutes is because your problem isn't working. It's the habit of avoiding. I just need you to start. And here's the other cool thing. We know based on research that if we can get you to start, 80% of you are going to keep going. Then what do you do? Well, then, then you turn down to the micro routines. It's like, okay, well, this is what I'm aiming for. How does that instantiate itself day to day, week to week, month to month? And that's where something like a schedule can be unbelievably useful. Google Calendar. It's like, make a damn schedule and stick to it. Okay, so what's the rule with the schedule? It's not a bloody prison. That's the first thing that people do wrong. They say, well, I don't like to have, follow a schedule. Well, it's like, well, what kind of schedule are you setting up? Well, I, sh I have to do this, then I have to do this, then I have to do this, you know, and then I just go play video games because who wants to do all these things that I have to do? It's like, wrong. Set the damn schedule up so that you have the day you want. That's the trick. It's like, okay, I've got tomorrow. If I was going to set it up so it was the best possible day I could have, practically speaking, what would it look like? Well, then you schedule that, and obviously there's a bit of responsibility that's going to go along with that, because if you have any sense, one of the things that you're going to insist upon is that at the end of the day, you're not in worse shape than you were that, than at the beginning of the day, right? Because that's a stupid day. If you have a bunch of those in a row, you just dig, you know, you dig yourself a hole and then you bury yourself in it. It's like, sorry, that's just not a good strategy. It's a bad strategy. As Stephen Pressfield writes, resistance cannot be seen, heard, touched, or smelled but it can be felt. We experience it as an energy field radiating from a work in potential. Resistance is a repelling force. It's negative. Its aim is to shove us away, distract us, prevent us from doing our work. And the secret to procrastination is this. One must do action without any expectation of the fruit of the action. That is, one must do work without any expectation of a reward or conversely, a fear of consequence. It should be done simply for the sake of doing the work itself with no emotion invested in any other external factor. So in fact, procrastination in many cases, the cause of that is we're over-motivated. We're overly striving both away and towards something. And that's what we've learned that procrastinators are actually not less motivated than the average person, even though that's what they say, or. I'm lazy or I don't have time management. Those are really not typically the causes. What it is is a feeling of stuckness. Two countervailing forces. We are driven towards success on the one hand, but we are strongly and powerfully motivated to avoid failure on the other. And we feel this stuckness, these countervailing forces. And many people describe procrastination as being stuck or against a wall, an obstacle they can't get over. Does that sound right to you? The phenomenon of it, what does it feel like? We are often uh, agitated. We can't sleep, but we can't work, right? So we have these countervailing forces, and we're unable to move forward until some moment where we have this insight. And we say, if I don't start now, I won't get this done. 
And the fear of not getting it done, <laughs> I see the nod, exceeds the fear of doing it less than perfectly. The research on procrastination is undeniable. It's black and white. Number one, all of you that procrastinate, procrastination is not the issue, it's stress. You're procrastinating to give yourself a little break at work. It's sort of like taking a smoking break almost, you know? You're just taking a break. So number one, because you're all stressed out and procrastinators are very hard on yourselves, this is gonna sound super stupid, but you gotta forgive yourself. You have got to actually have a talk with yourself where where you feel yourself starting to procrastinate, you go, look, I know I really screwed up. I know I'm in a mess financially. I forgive myself. I'm just gonna do the best that I can. So you have to address the thing that's underneath it. So that self-awareness of knowing, oh my God, here's that stress again about finances, screwing me over and preventing me from doing the small things that will actually fix my finances. Second thing that you're gonna do, procrastination's a habit, right? You get triggered by stress, the habit is to procrastinate. So when you get triggered by stress, your new habit is, oh, there's my stress again. I'm gonna actually tell myself, okay, you've done the best you can, it's okay, we're gonna do a little bit today. You're gonna create what we call starting ritual. A starting ritual is something that pushes you to start. The best one on the planet, the five second rule. So you've said, okay, there's my stress again. I forgive myself. Now we're gonna five, four, three, two, one. I want you to only work for five minutes. That's it, five minutes. Make phone calls for five minutes. Here's what we know based on the research. 80% of you will keep going. The trick is starting. You see, I want to break the connection between the trigger, which is stress, and the response, which is procrastination. And whenever you feel stress, which is normal, you have a choice. Here's that gap. In five seconds flat, the habit of procrastinating and beating yourself up will take over. Or you can close the gap, five, four, three, two, one, and you can make a different choice. I'm just gonna get started. I'm just gonna be okay with where I'm at, and I'm just gonna get started. Guideline number one. In order to succeed, one must set a concrete, specific goal. I set the goal of studying for my SAT every day. So the goal behavior was to come home, study for my SAT for 30 minutes, do my other homework, and then if I had leftover time, to enjoy other leisure activities. Additionally, while I was going through my routine, going on the phone or my internet was not allowed because it gave me a means to procrastinate all too easily. Number two, only feelings of positivity must surround this endeavor. This entails both propagating my own positive thoughts and pushing off any negative thoughts. For example, whenever I procrastinated until 10 p.m. or just skipped doing my homework entirely and completed it the class period before, I had to acknowledge the error and then put a positive spin on the situation, perhaps by saying that tomorrow would be a clean slate and a new opportunity to make better choices. Number three, at the end of the day, I had to acknowledge either a feeling of satisfaction upon making some sort of sincere effort towards my goal, or if I failed to do that, I had to acknowledge the feelings of guilt and anxiety within me. This again doesn't mean that I was to beat myself up over failure, but that I was to understand that it just didn't feel good when I avoided work, and that it did feel good when I didn't. This step is imperative because self-reflection is key to the entire process. Being aware of your emotional reactions to the method and asking yourself why you feel and act the way you do, that is what causes lasting change, as opposed to going through the process without, well, processing anything. Number four, no matter if I accomplished a lot, a little, or nothing at all, I was to take some time out of my day to feel grateful that I even had the ability to do whatever goal behavior it was that I wished to accomplish. I exercised feeling grateful that I was even in a position to take an SAT to pursue a higher education, or that I even had the mental capacity to sit through a test and do my best on it. And it's this long-term kind of procrastination that's much less visible and much less talked about than the funnier short-term deadline-based kind. It's usually suffered quietly and privately, and it can be the source of a huge amount of long-term unhappiness and regrets. And I thought, you know, that's why these people are emailing, and that's why they're in such a bad place. It's not that they're cramming for some project, it's that long-term procrastination has made them feel like a spectator, at times, in their own lives. You know, the frustration was not that they couldn't achieve their dreams, it's that they weren't even able to start chasing them. So I read these emails, and I had a little bit of an epiphany that I don't think non-procrastinators exist. That's right, I think all of you are procrastinators. Now, you might not all be a mess, like some of us, 
And some of you may have a healthy relationship with deadlines. But remember, the monkey's sneakiest trick is when the deadlines aren't there. And we need to think about what we're really procrastinating on, because everyone is procrastinating on something in life. We need to stay aware of the instant gratification monkey. That's a job for all of us. And because there's not that many boxes on there, it's a job that should probably start today. Well, maybe not today, but <laughs> you know, sometime soon. Thank you.